Hi, this is Gary with a little more relaxed version of MacMost for Monday. We're going to take a look at some viewer questions. So I noticed over the weekend that there were some messages in the inbox in the YouTube account for MacMost. Now I hadn't been checking it thinking everybody would send me messages at questions at MacMost.com or through comments on the website. But there were some on YouTube. So I figured, hey, today let's go and take some time and just run through them. I printed them out. Let's just look through them. I don't know all the answers, but I'll be able to point some people in the right direction. So Boris has a question here. Uh, he says his Dell computer crashed a week ago and he's getting a new one. And he wants to know about syncing his iPod to multiple computers. Should he do this with his new computer? So I'm not sure if he means syncing with the old machine and the new machine both, or he's got another computer on top of that. But it does bring up a really important point. If you are retiring a machine, it's really important to go in iTunes and deauthorize your iTunes account for that machine. See, you get about five authorized machines that can play back the music you purchased at the iTunes Music Store. Now, if you give one away, say you wipe the drive and you give it away, that machine's still authorized. Now, you can contact Apple and have them deauthorize that computer, but it's a lot easier if you remember to actually deauthorize that machine. And then, of course, make sure you transfer all your iTunes music and everything else using something like Migration Assistant over to your new machine. And of course, if you are using multiple computers, sure, go ahead, sync it with all of them. Here's an email about uh, viewing tutorials full screen. So in full screen mode, and I think talking about the collection of MacMost tutorials, or of course, many of these MacMost Nows are tutorials. Um, while there aren't any full screen versions, I mean, there's only the high resolution version, I publish everything at 640 by 360 which is pretty high res for most stuff on the web. You can actually see high res versions at YouTube by clicking on the little high res button in the lower right corner of the YouTube interface. Um, you can also go to our main website and look at the videos there are pretty high resolution and you can follow the links back to blip.tv and look at the blip.tv MacMost feed which has all of the original high res versions. So the ones I actually published they can be found at blip.tv to watch as high resolution as you want. C. Marshall asks, uh, in some of your videos there's an Apple II in the background. Can I have it? No, you can't. Let's see, Ray asks, um, I'm wondering if you know the application that I can use to run a music video in music on my computer and split it into three TVs. Uh, I get the idea here. You want to have basically a big display with say three TVs and have the video split between all three of them. Well, what you're probably going to need is a hardware solution more than anything else. Uh, if you have something like a Mac Pro Tower, you of course can get multiple video cards. Uh, if you don't have that, you're going to have to figure a way to actually split the video signal. There are some hardware devices out there that will split a VGA signal onto multiple screens. Of course, you can also get devices like some of the display link technology we've talked about in past episodes where you can add multiple monitors. This won't help but get onto a TV screen unless the TV screen has an easy way to convert a VGA or DVI signal to the TV. But you can also get some other hardware that will allow you to export the video coming out of your computer from say a DVI or VGA signal into one or more TV monitors. So it's hardware that you want, not software. See, Blue Seas is having trouble with something called Safari Extender, something he installed on his machine and he wants to uninstall it now and he's having trouble uninstalling it. So when you install one of these apps, whether it's an extension for Safari or it's a standalone application, if you want to uninstall it, there's a lot of things you got to do usually. You want to remove it from your Applications folder, of course. You also want to look in the Libraries folders, both the main system library folder and your personal one, and see if there's a folder there for that application. And look in the Application Support folder inside of the Library folder for things. Then you also want to look in the Preferences folder for a preference file. Sometimes the preference file will start with com dot and the company name dot, the application name. So you have to look really all over for that. Now, another thing when you're stumped or if you just want an easier solution, sometimes I just Google search for uninstall and the name of the application or remove the name of the application. And usually somebody else has put up some steps on how to uninstall that app. For Safari Extender, I saw several such things. So that brings us up to date on at least the questions I wanted to take a stab at in the YouTube inbox. In the future, you can always use questions at macmost.com to send a question or just a comment. But if you're sending a question, remember, if it's too specific, I'm probably not going to answer it. I mean, if it's for a specific type of printer or a very specific type of device, chances are I probably don't have it. I can't have everything. So I won't be able to answer the question. But if it's a more general type of question, especially one that will help out other viewers, I'll be more than happy to answer it. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. <laughs>